You are listening to the REI Mastermind Podcast. Join JD as he chats with industry-leading real estate experts and professionals. We learn from their experience and uncover the strategies to their success that we can implement into our own businesses and we can drive immediate results today. They share their experience and wisdom as we build the foundation to our own success. This is the REI Mastermind Network. So we have Peter Vexleman on the call. Peter, I really appreciate the call. And and this is going to be a very different conversation than I've had in the past. Um, we have a lot of newer to real estate investors that listen to my show. And uh, you... I, I'm going to just say, I, I think your your domain name kind of speaks volumes as to what you do and what you specialize in. It's called partnerdriven.com. I'm going to drive everybody to that just to see what Peter and his team are up to. But you really focus on that partner driven and, and it's more of a team effort when it comes to real estate investing. Would that be a fair way of summarizing it? Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on, Jack. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, for many years, I was kind of the typical investor. Had a pretty big operation. You know, did you know many, many, you know, well over a thousand real estate deals, and then switch this partner model where now we partner with people across the United States and we do real estate deals. The big win for me, obviously, as an investor, I want to do more deals. And if I open the territory up to the United States, that's about as big as you can get. But obviously, the you know huge win for the local partners because we literally help them facilitate uh, real estate deals right in their own marketplace. And then we just split the profits down the middle. So yeah, the website, the website in a very short way says it all. Yeah. So th- this is a very different model than, like I said, we've, we've talked to in the past and I, it just fascinates me. Um, can you s- kind of walk through the process of how you came about doing this? I mean, this is this is a great concept, especially um, spreading out across the United States like this. Yeah, well, as I mentioned, for many years, I did things the way traditional investors do it. And uh, and I did pretty successfully. We, uh, you know, I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And for many years, we, you know, did deals in Atlanta surrounding a couple markets around here. Uh, perfected that model, or at least as well as you could perfect something. Um You know, just to give you an idea, especially if you have audiences that understand real estate, we got it to the point where we're taking almost every day a thousand seller calls a day into my office. And uh, in real estate, that's really hitting it big time. Um, But then we wanted to grow. We wanted to grow beyond our borders. We wanted to grow beyond our own geography. So the first place we chose initially was Jacksonville, Florida. And we expanded mm-hmm. into Jacksonville. We actually found a, 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 a good partner to work with there uh, or a good boots on the ground. We set up our own physical office, staffed it. You know, we were still <clears throat> very focused doing most of the things from Atlanta. Um, you know, the leads were sent out of there. The calls came into Atlanta. Our appointments were set there. And, and it started working really, really well to the point that we, you know, really started dominating the Jacksonville market over the initial uh, number of years that we were in there. And then you do what anybody else does. You know, you achieve a measure of success. You don't sit back. You don't try to scale back. You do the opposite. You're trying to figure out, well, how do I get to the next level? And so the next level with next level, we actually very strategically across the United States started picking out markets that we wanted to do deals in. And yeah, we got to a point that we had um, 17 markets, all the way from Atlanta to Jacksonville, all the way to the West Coast in California. And, and so that was our next step into expansion. But again, we had boots in the ground in these markets. We had our own people in there. We were still centralized out of Atlanta, doing marketing out of there, taking calls out of there, helping people negotiate deals, and then feeding more or less leads and appointments to our uh, people across those 17 markets. And then like anything else, as I just said, you try to figure out, okay, well, what's the next step? Well, the next step is, okay, we figured out how to do things remotely. Why don't we now go big time? And why don't we open up the whole United States? And that was initially, initially when the partner model was initially born a number of years ago. And so we basically went public and told people, if you're an individual anywhere in the United States and you have potentially what you feel like is a real estate deal, we'd love to work with you. We'd love to partner with you. I'll give you the capital to execute the deal. We'll help you put it together. We sell it. We split the profits down the middle 
very similar to how we were doing it when we were expanding. Mm -hmm. But the very, very big difference became is when we were expanding, we were expanding with our own people internally. Now we went to the public. And I could tell you, as much as I want to say it was an immediate success, it was not. Uh, the model just fell on a, you know, just we flopped. First year, I lost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for a very basic reason. We didn't have all the systems in place, you know, because we literally were working with unknown people, you know, whereas before we were working with internal people, even though we were doing it remotely, um, as, as anybody will tell you, there's a big difference between doing something internally with your own people or, or externally with random people. So we knew we had to put basically checks and balances in place. And we did. And we did that to the tune that now years down the road, the partner driven model is thriving, absolutely exploding all over the United States. We're doing more deals with partners than we ever have. As a matter of fact, to the level that I don't even do my own deals anymore. I, that call center that used to take a thousand seller calls a day is no longer there. The negotiators that were negotiating deals for me are now helping my partners. Matter of fact, what I did is I moved the whole, all the infrastructure that I had assembled over a couple of decades into this business to help me put deals together. Now that whole infrastructure is still in place, still thriving, still rocking it out. But now they're there, all the people are there helping my partners do deals. And, and so in essence, what we do is we, we, um, we help people, everyday people across the United States, whether it's somebody that's never done a real estate deal and they want to do their first deal, or whether it's somebody that's done 50 deals and they're trying to figure out how to do in my next 50 deals. And what we do is we provide to our local partners, really what I call at this point, pillars of success when it comes to real estate investing. You know, real estate investing, there are certain things in real estate investing you just need. They're non-negotiable. You know, like them or not, want to do them or not, they got to be done. So what we do, for instance, the, the first pillar I always tell people is you got to know what you're doing. You know, although this business has very little barriers to entry, it's also has just as many people getting out. I'm sure people know it's getting in. Mm -hmm. So, and it's because literally they just don't know what they're doing, uh, lack of knowledge. And so we go over the top with that. We actually work with our partners literally on a daily basis. So uh, from an education and mentorship and accountability standpoint. So our partners overall become exorbitantly savvy as investors. The second thing, very critical, it's all about finding deals. And we're in an incredible market right now, as everybody knows, one I've never seen in over two decades. And so uh, as good as the market is, what that also means, it's harder than ever to find deals. So we actually spend money right where our local partners live, whatever marketplace that happens, uh, uh, they, they happen to be in. And we actually start generating leads for them, basically people that want to sell their properties and it don't get better any better than that. Uh, the next pillar we provide for them is uh, technology. You know, we all know that in today's environment, you got to have technology. You know, before technology was a luxury. Now it's if you don't have it, you're going to be behind the eight ball. Uh, you're going to be losing. And so we, you know, I own an app called Deal Driven and Deal Driven literally allows you to run your whole real estate investment business from, from, from your phone. You know, you could get data on any property across the United States that you need. You can get, uh, you could do driving for dollars from it. You could pull lists from it. You could do direct mail through it. So we provide technology to our partners. Once we find the right properties, I provide 100% of the capital to buy these properties. So my partners don't bring anything to the table when it comes to closings. I provide all the capital if the properties need any work. And then we just put them in the market, sell them, split the profits down the middle, 50-50. And that is what the partner-driven model is all about. And uh, like I said, we're just hitting it on all cylinders. We're doing more partner deals than we ever have before. Um, matter of fact, just before we went live, I just got a text. That's how I run my business. I get text messages when we close. We just closed an incredible deal with one of our amazing partners from South Florida, uh, Patricia Newberry. Patricia is a retiring police officer out of Florida. She just retired about a month ago, and uh, she started with me about two and a half months ago. We already made, we already bought and sold one deal, made over thirty thousand, and I just wired out four hundred thousand dollars for our next property. We're going to spend seventy five thousand fixing it, and it's worth about somewhere around six hundred fifty thousand dollars. And that's a t that's that right there is the partner driven model. We work with people like Patricia across the United States, and. We do deals, everybody contributes, whether it's your boots on the ground from the partner or infrastructure and finance and, and, and the financial side from me, and then we split the profits. So, you know, this sounds like a, a, a almost too good to be true kind of a platform. I mean, there's a lot of people who are getting into real estate investing for the first time who are looking for exactly this type of scenario. Like what what is the 
what does that perfect partner look like to you? You know, it's interesting you say that because for me to say what you just said sounds pompous, sounds like it's show offish, but I could tell you I've got 22 years in this business. And if I do say so myself, that I don't think somebody getting in the business can figure out how to find a better scenario. I challenge people every day. You know, if you think there's a better entry point in this industry than what we do, then show it to me. Um, but you, this is, you're right, this is an absolute game changer for those that want to get in the business. Because what we do is we we provide all the upside and we eliminate all the downside of the real estate investing business. And, and, and of course, nobody gets out of this business because of the upside. Everybody gets out of the downside. They make mistakes. They lose money. They don't know what to do and all this. So, um, you know, we eliminate that side of the equation totally. But from a perfect partner, what are we looking for? We got to be coachable, Right. We, 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 I've got thousands of deals behind me. We know what we're doing. So we need somebody who's coachable, somebody who's willing to hustle because they become the boots on the ground. So mm-hmm. they got to be willing to go out there, take a look at stuff, meet with sellers and stuff like that. Um, the mindset, you know, after doing this for many years is somebody that wants to level up in life. You know, somebody that's probably doing what they're doing right now and they're honest with themselves and they're like, this is not getting me what I want. This is, I'm not happy with where I'm at. I'm not getting what are their financial results. I'm not getting the lifestyle results, whatever it is. So somebody that wants to level up in life. And obviously some, somebody that wants to do it through the real estate investing business. You know, we're not doing brain surgery here. We're not basket weaving. But if somebody, you know, wants to head in the real estate investing uh, world and, and this is the direction that they're like, yeah, this makes sense. Then I would say what we do at Partner Driven is an absolute no brainer. Absolutely no brainer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you, you obviously at this point, then you have quite a few partners bringing you all of these opportunities. What does a good opportunity look like for you? Something that would. That sure. Would be a sure. Well, and, and, I, and I'll just put a little caveat on there. It's not like we have all these partners bringing us all these deals. We generate leads for them. We help them find it. We get involved all the way through the process. You know, we don't sit back and say, well, go find me an incredible deal, which is impossible to find and bring it to me. Mm -hmm. We literally spend money on lead gen, on all the stuff that happens before that deal even shows up. Um, But a good deal in real estate, it's it's a numbers driven business. It really is. You know, it's not really anything that people, you know, people say it's all about location. Well, I guess that has something to do with it. It's all about the school system. It's all about the numbers. It's all about the numbers. And so uh, there's a couple strategies we like to do. We like to do the fix and flips. We like to do the wholesale side. We like to do the uh, potentially some creative stuff, uh, easing more and more towards the commercial stuff. All these strategies, they're numbers driven strategies. They really are. And uh, we have our own set of numbers for each one of these strategies. Obviously, you know, since we do this all over the nation, sometimes we make adjustments based upon the experience of the partner or potentially the location of the deal. But if the numbers make sense, we're all in. We're all in. And, and because we've been doing this for so, so, so long, we're able to capitalize uh, in ways most investors, even if they're already involved, aren't able to do. You know, for mm-hmm. instance, we, we have an advantage in our marketplace not in our marketplace, in our, in, in our ways of doing things. Um, there are strategies in real estate that are designed for razor thin margins, like the wholesale strategy, right? It's, it's, it's a great strategy. It's a great entry point strategy, but it's not made to make millions of dollars mm-hmm. on a per deal basis, just because of the, what, because of how it's set up. And it really, you know, a lot of times wholesale is the, is kind of the, okay, can't do anything. Else, let's just do a quick turn flip on this deal. You know, let's let me like something. Well, because of how we've structured our deals, because of the contracts that we have put together, because of the money I've spent developing some of these things really is what it comes down to. We're able to take a, what is as a razor thin margin for an average investor. And I, when I say explode it, I mean explode it. You know, before we're an average investor trying to do this themselves, they may walk away with a five, ten thousand dollar profit on the exact same deal because of what we're able to do. We could easily make twenty to fifty thousand dollars on. So we literally give our partners an advantage in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. You know, from how to structure things, how to solidify things, how to market. Um, so um, anyway, so hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, no, that that does. So um, before we go any further, I wanted to make sure, again, I'm going to push everybody to your website. That's partnerdriven.com. I mean, what a great domain name. I mean, it's easy to remember. <laughs> I wish I could take credit for it, but my marketing guys came up with that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, 
you know, you early in your pillars of success, you mentioned support. Um, can you talk a little bit about the support you provide uh, regarding running numbers um, and and understanding? Because I think, especially when it comes to fix and flipping and wholesaling, I, I run into a lot of people who underestimate the wholesaling and or I mean the fix and flipping and what it's going to cost, the time frame and everything. Can you kind of give us a snapshot of what kind of support you provide there? Yeah. So we provide support on two sides of the equation. Okay. One side of the equation is uh, the knowledge side. Okay. I mean, you got to just, you got to know what you're doing, right? You got it. So literally every day we're coaching and training and supporting our partners from a level up perspective. But the other support you need is what you refer to is the execution of the deal. Because I could teach you everything I know about real estate and you know, inevitably you're going to go to the deal and you're going to like, well, Pete said it's green, but it's blue, obviously. Or Pete said this is going to happen or well, because real estate is very unique. Every deal is unique. Every deal is different. So what we, the other side of the support we provide is what we call back office support. And the back office support basically is when a deal potentially, there's a potential for deal here. It looks like there's a potential. The partner literally starts working with my back office all the way from how to run the numbers on this deal, how to run the cops, how to get the contractor involved, how to get the right realtor involved. And so we, because before we even became partner driven model, we were an investment company. We did thousands of deals by ourselves. So this back end office support is absolutely critical because we literally, again, from the time of the inception of the deal, we literally take our partners by the hand and walk them all the way through that deal from the negotiation piece to, like you said, running the numbers piece, running the construction piece, put all the fail safe mechanisms in there because you have, even at my, even our level, you have to have fail safe mechanisms in place. You know, what if this doesn't happen or what if this doesn't happen? So walk, we walk them all the way through there. The other support, which is actually the third support that we provide is back office support from in terms of, look, we all know nobody gets into real estate and says, wow, I want to do real estate because I want to process files. That sounds like really like a sexy idea to me. So let me mm-hmm. get into real estate. You know, nobody really gets into real estate so they can coordinate buyers and sellers. But guess what? On every single deal, there's a buyer and a seller. On every single deal, there's a title that needs to be handled. Every single deal, there's a file that needs to be processed. That's the other piece of support that we provide for our partners is the back office support, you know, processing that deal from the time. Okay, now it looks like we got a deal. We got a contract in place. Now let's take that deal and let's close on it. Let's execute it correctly so we can close on it in an expedient way. And then, you know, there's also that back end, right? Because then you got to sell the deal. Well, guess what? That's another process that needs to be taken through. So we provide support on educational side, deal formation side, and uh, office side, all the way through. All these support features are in place for our partner, for my partners. Sure. You know, I, I can imagine that, you know, with you putting up all the capital, there's kind of a time limit. You're, you're trying to hit certain targets associated with these type of things too. So on, on average, what have you found, especially like on the fix and flip side, when you acquire to getting it on the market, what are you trying, are you trying to keep within a certain time frame? Well, as you know, in real estate, it's, it's, you always rather do it quicker than slower, right? Nobody mm-hmm. wins. I don't care if you're the most experienced guy in the world. You don't win by saying, well, let me just sit back on this thing and let's, so you always want to go uh, quicker rather than slower. You also always want to make sure you understand uh, the partners, local partners experience, right? So if I got a local partner and he's done 200 deals before we start, well, you know what? We can get a little aggressive with that person, right? We can do maybe a rehab, a hundred thousand dollar rehab, right? Because mm-hmm. he's got track record. We know him being boots on the ground is going to be very helpful. On the other hand, you can have a partner that's brand new to real estate, never done a deal, never executed a deal. <coughs> with that individual, the most important thing is not to do something that takes eight months, is to do something quick. For a couple of reasons, put some pocket money in each other's pocket, make sure that person, that local partner is somebody we could ca- we could count on and build some confidence in that person, right? Mm-hmm. Even if they make more money sitting on something for eight months, I'd rather somebody walk away with some money, you know, in the first one or two months, because that also gets them more confident and gets them more locked in. So yes, we rather do it uh, quicker rather than longer. And a lot of that is literally determined by the experience of the partner. You know, is this the first deal we're doing? You know, I have partners that I've done tons of deals with. I mean, you know, they call my back office. They're like, I need a hundred grand. We don't even... We don't even do anything because they have their own systems on the ground. They have their own internal mechanisms that we actually help them set up. 
So when, you know, when somebody like one of my partners, Seth calls, and I've done well over 150 deals with him, we don't do any due diligence on his stuff because he, we helped him build his own local team. Sure. Um, and, uh, and sometime, you know, with someone like that, we could, we've done deals that lasted over a year. Mm-hmm. But again, we had the confidence. We knew Seth as a, as, as a long-termer. We, we, he knew what he's doing. He's got its own boots in the ground. We, he had his own. Con- Let me tell you something. <laughs> Funny story about Seth. I, I've been this thing for 22 years, right? I've done thousands of deals. Seth, one of my partners, has a contractor. Now, th- for anyone that does real estate deals, what I'm about to tell you, they're like, no, nope, that doesn't exist. This contractor, his name is Roger, has done probably, I don't know, maybe 80 rehabs. Do you know he's never asked for a draw? Not one time. The only time he asked to get paid is when we buy it. He fix it on his own money. We do a walkthrough. Like, no, the buyer of the property does a walkthrough. Everybody signed off. And right before closing, he's like, okay, you owe me 60 grand. I mean, those contractors don't exist. But when you have that kind of team in place, you know, where Seth is at, no problem. You know, we'll sit on things longer. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll go further down the road and, uh, and make it happen. So faster rather than slower, but experience of the partner always also takes into, is taken into consideration. So, well, you know, that kind of leads me to my next question. I always like to hear success stories is, is Seth, would Seth be that one where could you give us an example of somebody who came in absolutely no experience and now they're kind of a rock star for you well it just so happens seth had no experience now when he started with me a couple of years ago he was the funny story on seth is he was getting married three months after he was starting with me he had no money he's like pete my fiance doesn't even know i'm doing this i got you know i got some money here i'll you know this is you know this is what it costs to join he goes but if i don't make this money back like i'm dead she's not going to marry me so here we are, you know, two and a half, three years later, they have two kids. They travel once or twice a, a, a month and we've made millions and millions and millions of dollars together. But it's interesting. I was just doing a Zoom call earlier with some of my partners and Denisha, Denisha popped on there. And Denisha was, a, was I'll tell you the funny story in Denisha. Denisha is a, is a single mom out of South Florida. I think five or six kids. She was actually one of my first partner partners ever. And back then I didn't have a ton of partners. So I'd actually go visit my partners. Right. So I remember I visited Denisha and, uh, and she was, you know, it was just like, I was like, oh man, we got a lot of things we got to overcome. Single mom, you know, several kids. And I remember when we did our first deal, I don't even think we made a ton of money. I think we made like 20, 25,000. She's like, and I always just wire money. He's like, Pete, don't wire. She says, I'm coming to Atlanta. And we have this historic picture where She's up at my office and she jumps in my hands and hugs me. And there's happened to be a photographer there. And, and it became a historic picture like that. You know, we had a, a, a young kid, Alex May, uh, $1,500 a month he was making when he started with me. Um, he was a bank teller, 21 years old. He's like, just help me do one deal. Help me do one deal. I'll never, ever, ever, ever in my life go to back in the corporate. We did our first deal the first couple of months. And you know, he's never ever, he retired. I don't know if he retired at 21, um, but uh, he quit his job and, you know, he's, uh, he's never, ever, ever went back. We had uh, Ed Lindsay, who's been with me for a couple months. Interesting thing about Ed, when he started with me, he was forced to retire. Like he was, he was, one of those, he was a retirement age, but he thought he had some time left. And he started with us, I don't know, five, six months ago. And then I heard through the grapevine that he had to get out. I mean, he was being forced retirement like a month. So he had a month and no, you know, even with us, a month is just like, this. that's just too quick. Um, but it took us about two months and we split almost $40,000. Uh, uh, and, and so that obviously made the retirement, you know, a lot easier and, and things like that. So I can tell you story upon story like that, just everyday people. But then we also have had some, we, you know, I have had partners to come in a number of them who were already successful. You know, everyone I just shared with you right now had no zero experience, was like zero to hero. But I have had partners that come in that just were stuck. Like, okay, Pete, I've done 100 deals and I have no idea what's going on, but I am 100% stuck. You know, I, I love working with those partners as well because, you know, I, I love showing people how to, uh, how to get to those next levels. Uh, how to get, you know, okay, the reason you're stuck at 100 is because the infrastructure is not set up right. Or the reason you're stuck at 100 is because, you know, you're not positioned this way. So, I like we just, you know, my team, and I keep on saying, I, it's not really I, it's my team. My team's been through war and back together. You know, like I said, it's a team that's 
over two two decades in development. And so we just love, love, love. As a matter of fact, I, earlier today I was talking to my staff. Um, in the last three or maybe four days, 86 contracts out. For anybody that was real estate, 86 contracts in just a couple days, that's just unheard of. So we are just mm-hmm. absolutely – we have some huge goals. I have a personal goal that by the end of this year – I want to do in a 30 day time span, I want to do one deal every day with a different partner, not like the same partners, multiple deals, but like one every 30 days, 30 different people that we close. That's a huge monumental goal because we're really taking people that don't necessarily have they, a lot of them don't. They're starting, you know, very much entry level into this business. A lot of them we don't even see because my partners aren't here in Atlanta. They can stop over at our offices. I mean, I have partners. The only time we see them is when we do something like this, like a Zoom call. Or mm-hmm. we, you know, get together, you know, with our partners every couple of months. And it's always cool. A partner comes up, taps me on the shoulder. We, we just did a live event a couple of weeks ago. And he's like, Pete, I know you don't know who I am, but we've done a couple of deals together. And I appreciate it. That's always really cool to do that. So, yeah, that, that is neat. So, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of times regarding mindset. And, and uh, I, I can't stress enough the importance of, of mindset when it comes to real estate investing. And I'm sure that's also part of your support. What, what type of exercises or, or, or to, to, get, to get some of these newer investors, their minds right when they get into real estate investing? Well, you know, it's interesting. You know, when it comes to real estate, there's two things. Number one, there's the technical side of it. You know, you got it. There's a contract involved. There's negotiations. And that's all well and good. But I'll be honest with you. I do not spend much time with my partners on any of that. I mean, my team is amazing behind me. My part is exactly what you're talking about. It. You know, I like to get involved in the mindset side. Because here's one thing I always teach people. You know, this whole adage that there is no shortcuts in life. There's no short. You just got to work, work with. That's That's a fallacy. It's an absolute fallacy. The most broke people I know are the hardest working people. So there are shortcuts in life. And and so I teach people. I try to instill those things like get up earlier, one hour earlier every day of your life. And now you're going forward, wake up one hour early. That's an extra 365 hours you could gain on your competition over a year. And, impl- and use that hour to do something productive, right? What an incredible advantage you have, you know? Um I think a big mistake that uh, especially beginners make, and I know this has nothing to do with real estate, is beginners tend to put a timeline on success, right? Kind of like, I'm going to give this all I got for three weeks or mm-hmm. for three months. And to me, you know, and it's like, you can't, you know, look, how, how old are you? Well, I'm 45. Okay, I got it. How much money you got in your bank account? Oh, not a lot, you know, 10 grand. Okay. So it took you 45 years to get to 10 grand, but you're going to give yourself two weeks or two months to get to a million, right? It's just like, so, you know, you have to really start changing how people think. You know, another mistake people make is they evaluate their progress. It's totally, how can somebody who's never done something evaluate how well they're doing? You know, and they are always using the wrong valuation. Like, oh, Pete, I've been doing this, whatever this is for three months and I'm not where I want to be. Well, where do you want to be? And who tells you that in three months you should be here? It's just this, you know, people come up with these things. Uh, they know they, they use the wrong mile markers, right? People like to, to like to uh, 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 evaluate based upon how much money they make. That's terrible evaluation. Making money in the beginning has nothing to do with anything, right? You, you shouldn't even, if you're making money in the beginning, all that tells me is you got lucky, by the way. I don't care what you're doing in life. If you're making money, they wanted something like real money. You got lucky. And it ain't going to last forever. And good luck what happens when it starts coming in. So money is, has no measure in terms of uh, alignment, in terms of a mile mark in the beginning. It's all, you know, how many calls are you making? Those are the kind of things you have to uh, guesstimate. And, and, and like I said, don't ever put a timeline on success. Put a timeline on, on failure. You just say, listen, I'm putting a stake in it. I'm not happy where I'm at. I'm not satisfied with my age to where I've been. I'm not happy with the lifestyle. So the stake I'm going to put at is I'm not going to put a, a stake on three months of trying something. I'm going to put a stake that in three months, I will not be broke anymore. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's that it's still, you know, we're programmed in such a screwed up way growing up, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and I think in a way it's kind of a societal thing, you know, like, you know, I, I, because I never really succeeded in many things in life, failing became pretty easy to me. But you know what? That's a great skill set to learn, that it's okay to fail, right? 
But then what, what, what are we taught as we grow up, right? Failure in school. What happens when you fail? You're F. That's an F. That's bad. So the whole, we're programmed to do things in a totally opposite way. No one ever succeeded their way to success. Everyone failed their way to success. And so, you know, I don't many times if I do something new, I don't, I don't judge by how successful I am. I'm judged by the activity I put in or, you know, the, you know, I understand how to do those things. So those are, I think those are the biggest pieces. Those are biggest pieces. And I will tell you, here's the other thing. You always got the technical side, whatever it is you do in life, real estate, you know, car mechanic shop. And then, like you said, you got the mindset stuff. I'm telling you, the older you get, the more I'm realizing people don't get out of the technical because of the technical side. They don't quit the road to success. It's always the mindset. It's always mm-hmm. they quit because they can't get it straight here. Like real estate, you know, what are we doing as investors? Talking to sellers? I mean, we're not performing brain surgery here. I mean, real estate is about as a basic thing as this, but it's a mental like torture temp chamber, right? Like you're constantly getting rejected. You're showing up at no shows. You think you got a closing and falls through and all this. So no one ever came to me and said, Pete, I'm quitting because I just can't dial that phone, man. I keep on dialing the phone and my finger keeps hurting. And it's just, it's just, a no, it's always a mental, it's always a mental thing. And that's why I always tell people, if you decide to be successful, real estate investing, McDonald's, whatever it is, you better figure out why you want to do it. And ultimately, ultimately, it's going to come down to that why of why you want it has to be bigger than the reason you want to quit. Because I don't care how tough you are, you're going to want to quit. I mean, I quit this business 20 some years ago, 100 times. Easily. First year, I quit. Every day, I quit. Just quit. I'm out. This doesn't make sense. You know, I can't do it. I'm, but the reason why, if it's big enough, because you're going to have reasons to quit. Everyone has legitimate reasons to quit everything, Right. Everyone there, you know, I had legit, I lost, I made myself homeless. Is that not a legitimate reason enough to quit? Like to, to quit something when you're like, well, let's see now at this point, I've been doing this and I actually went from having something to like being homeless. That's a pretty legit reason to quit. So we all have legitimate reasons to quit anything we do. Okay. Um, Figure out why you want to do it. And that why has to be so big that, and you know what, The, the crazy thing about this whole thing, Jack, People are already doing this, right? They're going to jobs they don't like. They're doing things they don't want to do. They're not getting the results they want, but the society programs them, but that's okay. That's okay because it's okay not to have what you want. It's okay to not make the kind of money. It's okay to have your boss tell you when to eat lunch. It's okay to only take two weeks off a year. And so we're programmed that for here, we'll do whatever it takes. But God forbid we go here and do it for ourselves. All the rules are off, you know? So get the mindset straight, and uh, and that's what I actually do. You, you, uh, all of my stuff that it, like when I interact with my partners, ninety eight percent of it, two percent technical, ninety eight percent all up here. Yeah. No, you know one of my typical as we're as we're wrapping up on questions, I usually ask my guests to give one actionable thing that our listeners could do uh, to get started, but. I don't know if I could ask for a better piece of advice than what you just gave in that, in that bit and and starting with your why and sitting down and actually taking a moment and taking a breath and writing it down and, and understand why you're going to do this is probably the biggest piece of advice that they could, they could garner right out of that I don't want to call it a rant, but that was that was awesome. <laughs> I've been called worse. I've been called worse. It's okay. Yeah, uh, that was I've been called that worse. Was, that was great. Thank you. Um, and and uh, I have a feeling we could go for another hour. I mean, some of the stuff that we're talking about here, we're just brushing the tip of the iceberg. But I'm gonna again push everybody to partnerdriven.com. See if it's a good fit for you and. Uh, uh, there's a lot of resources and content there. Um, and I know that, Peter, you're very active on a lot of social media. I mean, you got you got a ton of followers, uh, especially on Instagram. So you better people should check that out. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, before we before I let you go, though, I, I'd like to ask if there was any question you wished I would have asked you here today. 
No, because ultimately the right question is the question that your viewer is going to see and is going to resonate with them and where it's not going to resonate with them. But um, I will tell you, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of different people that watch this. And uh, 22 years ago, this business beat the crap out of me. I mean, it made me homeless. Um, and right now, if you watch what I do over a week, you know, it, it, I think most people would love to trade places with me. I could tell for people, if they're kind of in that position in life where it's not working out or they know it's not going to work out, I, 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 I just tell people the real estate business right now is exploding. It's better than it's ever been in over the two decades for a lot of reasons, the pandemic, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's an incredible time to be in this business. And, um, and the reason I even... You know, I, I don't usually, I would never do interviews and I finally st allowed, you know, to start doing interviews. The only reason I do this is because for many years I chased deals. I chased real estate deals and now I chase partners. And this is why I do interviews like this is because I want to get the messaging out. I look for the right people, the hungry people, people that want to level up. And so if that's the person that's listening to this, I'd love the opportunity to, uh, uh, explore the opportunity of possibly partnering with each other and do some deals. Well, I can't thank you enough. And uh, I hope we can chat again sometime. Make sure you head over to uh, partnerdriven.com for more information. But uh, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. I appreciate you having me, Jack. Thank you very much. This has been the REI Mastermind Network. You can already tell that we've made some changes and a few more are on the way. If you are interested in what we have planned, head over to patreon.com slash REI Mastermind and support the show today. Financial contributions are always appreciated, along with a like, share, and review. It really helps us grow and reach more people with this valuable information. See you next time, and tell a friend.